is January the 11th, 1730 UTC. It is NF Tuesday. Crypt Keeper ready to roll, man. It's like 11, 1130 in one second. Chris in here. <laughs> Love this. Start with me and Christine and Crypt Keeper. Finish with a hundred of us, right? What's good, everybody? <laughs> what is up, man? Yo, so before everybody gets in here, I just wanted to tell y'all, um, I'm starting my own, um, well, me and my buddy are starting a manage NFC management group called Influence You. It's going to be crazy. Influence You. I'm going to write that down. I want to hear more about that. Yeah, you may have to talk about that in our group. <clears throat> I see we've got a few people kind of uh, sneaking into here. So welcome. Uh, a few more people will come in. And uh, as they do, make sure you tweet out the room. Make sure you tell your followers that, uh, hey, you're in here learning a little bit about today how to spot good NFT projects. And the reason I put this is it is overwhelming how many projects are out there? And, you know, to my eye, Crypt Keeper, I see you're putting up the hundreds, but maybe not to your eye because I know you've got a good eye. To my eye, it, there's a lot of, like, good projects out there. It just, you know, the art looks good. Team looks good. Everything looks good just at, at initial glance. But we all know, and I've seen it happen several times, even in the last week, where rugs happen or just uh, floundering projects happen. Just projects that, you know, maybe had a good idea, but the, the leadership wasn't there or something like that. So I want to discuss today maybe what all of our, um, you know, criteria is for deciding what's a good project or what's another project. Did you guys see that tweet over the weekend where uh, somebody rugged and uh, they actually put a tweet out to announce it first that said, uh, hey, guys, actually the charity that uh, we're supporting is my bank account. Peace. See ya. Did y'all see that? <laughs> yeah, I tweeted it. I was like, this is heartbreaking. Yeah. Can, can, you, believe they, <laughs> can you believe they even wrote that tweet? I mean, most would just right off into the sunset i imagine after he wrote that tweet um he got in his car and uh backed up and then some truck rammed into him. <laughs> okay are you okay chris you sound kind of stuffy dude. yeah i'm congested again my uh the heater at the house isn't working like it Ooh. stopped working so now it's like 60 degrees in here i am so sorry to hear that yeah yeah i can hear the i can hear the stuffy in you too and uh i'm fairly stuffy myself coming off of omicron so uh i don't think i'm contagious anymore I, I feel a lot better but yeah i gotta look out a lot of the stuffiness going on so um yeah get well soon for sure but uh, if you're listening here that is christine barnum she joins me here monday through wednesday on these spaces and we've had some really good talks lately we've looked for how to look over a contract correctly uh we talked about a few different projects yesterday but today yeah how do we find the good projects uh, or maybe i should say how do we find the great projects because that's the only ones you want to put your hard-earned eth on is the great projects, right? Not, not, not even, you need better than good. And so how do we kind of separate those? So I found a little article, you know, I did a little Reddit searching and I found, let me see if you guys agree with this list. It is. So when you're looking, you look at the community. Okay. What, what is the community saying about the project? The website, is it a decent website or is it, you know, Microsoft front page, 1994, uh, social media, Okay, do they have a presence on social media? Did, uh, you know, if it's an influencer, have they ever talked about NFTs ever before in their life um, until now? Um, and then lastly, just the art itself, which is real subjective. And this is where I can get in trouble because I think they all look good, or at least many of them. And, you know, I try to look for the art in the way that maybe you should and that uh, if it's pixel art, I try to think of it as like, oh, no, it doesn't look as good as the 3D, 3D art. No, I try to compare does this look good for pixel art? And I'll look at that sort of thing. So when you put that all into a ball, put it, you know, wad it up and say, is this a good project? Then I have a little bit more to, to go off of. Crypt Keeper, do you have any like criteria? Do you have a secret sauce that you say, this is, if they don't have this, I'm out? Um, damn. <laughs> I honestly don't know. Like, I don't even have a secret sauce. I just feel like it just comes to me naturally. Like, I'm still trying to figure out how do I, I'm still trying to figure out how I find these projects. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's crazy because, like, we all look for – a lot of us look for basically the same thing, community, obviously. Sure. Like, the, the last thing I look for is the artwork because the artwork could not look appealing to my eyes, but it could look appealing to somebody else's eyes. So I look at it as as – in that aspect to where I try to see the beauty in everything. But what I look for the most in is like really big on community. Like that's where I'm really, really big on. So wait and, a second for the art, you say you don't really look at that a whole lot because you understand that it's subjective. Yeah, exactly. Cause if I, if I'm just buying artwork that I like, I'm gonna like everything. <laughs> like right. I'm like, I'm like you, like I, I see the beauty in everything. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of hard to be like, all right, cool. I'm like, this artwork is going to moon. No, not necessarily. So, well, right. Yeah. Good. Good artwork does not necessarily mean it's going to moon. Matter of fact, I, I'm becoming more and more convinced that good art, artwork is just expected in, in the space that it should, or, or maybe that somebody will find it to be good artwork. Uh, you know, but that doesn't mean it's going to do anything. I just feel like I feel like like when people say, oh, having a good community, a lot of people that say having a good community, all they're doing is they're in there watching, not in there engaging. Like when I go into these these discords and I go into Twitter, I'm actually engaging with people and the first people that I want to talk to is the founders and the mods. Like that's why I like going in and have conversations with, cause the people know just as much as we know, you know what I'm saying? But when you get into mods and the admins and the people that's really behind the project, then you can get more in depth with it and they could explain more to you on how they see it and then how you can view it. Well, maybe, maybe there's more of a question then on community then. So whenever you go in and you're like assessing, is it a good community? That sort of thing. Um, it sounds like you're looking for mods and almost like team members, not necessarily as do they have, you know, 20,000 people in their discord. Or yeah, something. no, definitely not. Cause there's, there's been, there's been um, discords that have half a million in it. And those projects are not the ones that are doing right now. Right, 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 right. Why do you think that is? Why do you think you can have so much support on an NFT project where you can have like half a million people in your discord and then just like all that hype, all that whatever, and, and the, the projects just fizzle out. What's Because it's just hype. And it's just hype. Hype is not, hype don't equate to anything. Hype equates to them making money, not us making money. Yeah, but don't you think a good, I mean, a good project needs hype, right? I mean, one that's like good and it's going to have legs and it's going to make everybody money. It, it's going to need some hype too. I mean, yeah. no, nah, definitely. Yeah, definitely hype, but you can get it. So I've been in projects that have 6,000 people in it. Three, all right. Let's take chubby, chubby, um, chubby, uh, Kaiju for, for instance, they only had like 4,000 people in the discord and they sold out a 10,000, 10,000, um, piece NFT. That's that, that's hype then. Right. I mean, if you got, I don't, I don't know, I don't necessarily think it's built off a of hype. I just think their community and their transparency was there. You know what I'm saying? Because if it was hype, they'll have 50,000 in the Discord and they didn't at all. Nowhere near it. Yeah, you're right. And of course, I don't know if like, I don't know if, you know, people could mint two of them or anything like that. If you're telling me 4,000 people in their Discord and they sold out 10,000, you know, hype to me, it's a net, it, you need, you want hype. Like if I'm to make an NFT project, I, I want a lot of hype around it. I want it to be hyped, but you're right. If that's all you've got, if you got your, your, uh, you know, your, your big bag and what, what weapons do you have in it? And you're like, well, I've got my community and they are hyped about it. Everybody's talking about it, but that's really all you've got. Well, that's going to fizzle out really fast because what's going to happen is your community, it's going to be ready for launch day. Okay. It's minting day. Everybody's falling all over themselves, doing whatever they can do to get on to, to mint that day. And then they all get their NFTs and then they're like, go, Okay, uh, we, we reveal now, right? Okay, when we reveal, man, this is going to be sick. It's going to go crazy. And then you reveal. And, you know, undoubtedly, you've got, uh, you know, half or more of that community is going to get commons, right? That's why they're common. Uh, and, and then they're going to get it. And all of a sudden, some of that hype dies down a little bit. And you're like, oh, oh, okay. I, I just get this little crappy one. And everyone else, you know, I see a few other people getting these, you know, legendaries or whatever. I'm maybe not as sold on this as I used to be. I'm going to get rid of this for cheap. And all the floor price begins being set. And then that floor price just drops and drops and drops from there. And the hype is gone. And then what do you got? You got nothing left after that. I was just about to say the same thing. Like, what do you have after all that hype? Right, right, right. So what do you think they need? Is it utility or is it or how do you sustain hype? I think I think the way you sustain, sustain hype is by <laughs> not keeping everything a secret, but keeping it as 
like, I always go back to Psychedelic Anonymous, how he creates hype because you don't know his next move. So I think, like, for some projects, I think that's a good a good way to go. Like, not just be like, all right, this is what we're giving you. Here you go. Like, keep some things behind the scenes and give it to you. Give it to you in increments where it can create FOMO. Like, I got to buy this project because I think the next thing coming out is going to be bigger than the first thing he came out with. Like, that type of deal. For sure. Dre, were you going to say something to add to that? I just, no, he said exactly what I was going to say is when you keep the almost like um, excitement up with not revealing exactly what's going to happen. That's why a lot of these projects, even the ones that do uh, uh, no, what do they, what do they say? No roadmap, just fun and vibes and surprises coming. People are like enticed by that because it's like, Hey, who knows what this project can do? It could be nothing or it could be everything. Who knows? You know what I mean? Like that, that's always what it is. And especially if you have the art to back your project, like for instance, my project that's going to be coming out, I want to do the same thing uh, is where it's like no promises, but we're going to give you guys the moon. And that's where people are like, holy crap, you know, who knows what can happen? I mean, you look at Alien Friends, like they had a simple roadmap and then dude, they just left and right and they went left and right. And then because you never know what's going to come up. And, and who wants the project, who wants to pair with you, who wants to grow with you, and you start making enough noise, keeping your community involved, and people love that. And for me, what's really important is the devs and the, the team talking with people in Discord. That is something that's so key, because as soon as people see, like, the founders are missing, like like for like how Crip said with PA, Vulture jumps in and he'll talk to us, and we're just like, holy crap, it's, it's Vulture, like, people want to know what he has to say. Whereas a community where the devs and stuff are, are quiet or you never hear from them and they're just like, yeah, we're working in the background. It's like, okay, well, you expect all these people to kind of keep talking to themselves and make up their own topics. Like I, I run out of stuff to talk to people about. <laughs> Gosh, that's, you know, I, I can relate to that being, you know, a, a, a voice chat host is it's always great whenever, you know, if I'm doing an AMA and I'm talking to a, you know, a crypto founder or an NFT project founder. It's great because they always can lead the discussion on, you know, what they, what their talking points are. Whenever you don't have that and you're just kind of having a voice chat where it's just kind of no holds barred, if there's not like strong opinion leaders in that room, it's tough to kind of keep a conversation going. And in a project, that's even more because people want to talk. That's why they're there. That's why they're in the Discord is to talk about that project. And if nobody's, uh, you know, pumping up the project, then it can lose steam real quick. So that's a if you're writing down things of you know what should be a checklist to look after, I think what Dre said is real important that the the mods are or the, maybe the founders are in there be, being a part of the community um, right there with everybody. You know, yeah. another thing you had said is um, uh, you know talking about you know showing kind of what you're going to do or leaving that mystery. Isn't the hybrid model probably the best though, where you yes. you say we're going to do this, but we also might do some other things too. Yeah, exactly. And I say don't give out what it is because if you don't deliver, then people get hurt. Like, an example, look at the PA floor right now, just from the hiccup of delivering what people were expecting because the whole hype was that we're going to do a collab with major brands and then all of a sudden, oh, we're going to be doing our own merch and our own this and our own that. It was Everybody was, like, shell-shocked. Whereas if you promise too much, you could also hurt yourself. Yeah, like, um, let's say... Let's say um... Crypto bats, Ozzy Osbourne. That, that that project. We, a lot of us came into that project. Like, well, me, me, me specifically. I was like, oh, I don't think I want that. Like, I like it. It's cool, but I don't know if I want it. Now, when you're looking at it, it's a whole different. It did a whole new U-turn. Now these bats are gonna be, are gonna be able to bite other NFT and collabs, and they're gonna be mutated into some craziness. So that yeah. alone makes you be like, you know what? I gotta go on OpenSea and spend fucking five ETH right now. Yep. You know? So. Yep. It, it Hype is definitely where it builds a project and then longevity is the engagement for sure. Ooh, I like that. I, that's a, that's put that on a throw pillow. Hype yeah. is what builds a project. Engagement keeps it going. That's, that's good stuff. Yeah, I definitely totally agree. And um, to add on, you know, with the engagement, I will also say um, to have some type of interactive aspect to the project to where the, the community feels included in the growth of the future um and also just constantly expanding having some type of collaborations with other projects as well to not only build your community but theirs as well so i think those are some great points that you all brought up well, i like the collaboration thing you just brought it up because i think that's kind of a growth hack to 
is, you know, you say, okay, we've got our community. We love our community. We see this community over here that has a lot in common with our community. And, uh, you know, let's combine forces for a little bit, do kind of a collab between the two. And next thing you know, now, maybe a few people from their community come to yours. Maybe a few of yours also buy into their project. And it's kind of a beautiful thing where you can kind of uh, join forces a little bit. Uh, oh, yeah. That's why freaking CryptoBots is going to be nuts. They're going to go crazy, dude. They done bought Board Apes, Alien Friends. They done buy uh, um, Kongs. Kongs, Doodles. They, they, they are bringing all the communities together in one. Shoot, I went and bought this Alien Friend because now I want to mutate it once I get my crypto back. It's like, well, this is going to be nuts, you know? And like I FOMO'd back in. You can ask the group. I sold my Alien Friend and then I was reading and it was like, oh, if you have an Alien Friend and a crypto bat in your wallet, you can make a mutation and get a mutated bat. And I'm like, oh, now I got to buy back in. And then I just went and spent four ETH on another freaking alien friend when i was in profit i used that profit to buy another one <laughs> i like you know for me i like the on my backwards i like the hype after the project is minted let me mm -hmm. just let me be more specific the hype after the project is minted is where yeah um, where, what i like not the hype during the project yeah because, same a lot of know, that is artificial too like yeah. right before tfg <clears throat> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> now you could hype a project up before the mint which is great bring the bring the excitement bring the the exclusivity like that that the project that we just got in last night antonym that project is nuts like you have to figure out, figure out riddles and do all kinds of stuff to get whitelist to even get the discord invite you got to figure it out like it's it's crazy and then what's going on after the project like you have to keep people hyped of are we going to the moon? It's not just like a, oh, because yeah, every project has that. We're going to the moon, guys. We're going to the moon, guys. But why and how? You know, that that's what people really want to know is what what is this project going to do? Who's going to get into this project to for, for big name wise? And, and, you know, who's reaching out to these people to get these big names on your project? Like those are definitely things that people look for because as soon as like, uh, for instance, I bought this stupid, no, sorry, it's not stupid, but the crypto skulls because I've seen 888 bought five of them this morning and then gary v just tweeted it out and then when you start seeing people getting this hype i guess apparently this was the original og pfp before punks but still it's it's crazy when you start getting the hype behind your project after it launches yeah i think that authentic hype after the project is a good indicator if it's a good project or not like long term um, like you said, initially the hype in the beginning, of course, is, is has different motives behind it. But if your community is still sticking around and they're excited about the next move, then you definitely have a chance of building something solid in the future. You know what else I look for? Like, um, I look for, let's just take the nudie community, for instance. They already have and already spent money buying land in the metaverse, by um, doing VR experiences for iPhone and Android users. So that's another thing that I look for. Not a project like that is waiting to get the bag in order to be able to further their process. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 That makes, that makes uh, complete sense. Uh, we, CJ Washington, I see we brought you up here and uh, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. That's you... my, that's, that's, that's my partner right there. That's my <laughs> guy. That's like my brother. What's up, CJ? What's up, everybody? Uh, what's up, Chris? What's up, Christine? Appreciate y'all having good. me. Man, I heard a lot of like great stuff about NFT space, and I think a lot of a lot of that is very true uh, when it comes to things you look for in a project. And just to touch on just a little bit of the things I look for, um, I really like uh, fully doxed uh, mm -hmm. dev teams and communities. Just for the simple fact, um, this is a space where it's unknown to a lot of people, and scamming is fucking nuts in this space. So if you know who you're dealing with, you don't get that. Oh, I'm an Amazon shopper vibe. You get like you feel like you know who you're buying something from. You don't feel like you're getting because honesty. This space is going to be successful or not because we don't know. A lot of people aren't the uh, uh, market experts. A lot of people don't know how to set up a wallet. So when you're again, you're just dictating things to so go. You want to make sure that they're honest, they're transparent. So I look for fully developed communities. I look for communities and discord groups that aren't just hype into the moon into the get we're going to work out to make sure CJ I think you're uh yeah getting a little a little uh garbled uh so I don't know if you're in a, a bad a bad cell, uh, cell signal or something like that I um, may can you guys hear me so now? oh much better. is that better tons better tons better 
Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know what the last part, uh, last point I was talking about, but I just definitely, I just think uh, fully doxed, uh, being transparent, honest, and open about the expectations of the project. Um, I think being a little bit, and I'm going to say this word, in a, um, being a little bit promiscuous with your community, and that's kind of like showing us some, showing us some skin, but not showing us a lot of skin. I, li I like the fact that like um, just getting us on our toes and having us antsy and not prepared to really know what's going on, just the element of surprise. Um, and I look for ten. I look for tenured people and like how long they've been in the space. Because if like you're like two years in and like you're promising all of this X, Y, and Z, I just don't feel like maybe you've been in it long enough to know how to build a project or to know what to expect or even how to scale. So I won't ramble, but that's kind of like some of the things I look for. Now that was that was some that was some good uh, info. There is, you know, whenever we're looking at, you know, are they doxxed or are they not? That doesn't mean that somebody that you know is private can't put a successful project, but maybe it makes the odds a little bit better. And just because they haven't ever even, you know, they just got into the space two years ago, doesn't mean they are gonna, you know, have a failure of a project. But again, this is all odds. This is like playing at the casino here, and you want to do everything you can to make your odds better because none of this is a guarantee just because they're doxxed isn't a guarantee just because they do the hype machine right it's not a guarantee just because they've done another successful project doesn't mean this one will be successful but you hope that if you take all these things into account and you can look at all of them and then make kind of a bigger decision based off of all of this that it might help with uh, you to ultimately have just a Two percentage points better in your chance of it being a good project uh let's see uh blue chip sent uh, what's up you had your hand up yeah, I just had a question. I wanted to kind of get you all's perspective on that because there's a lot of, um, I guess, different opinions about being doxxed versus not being doxxed because you have some people that will quote unquote dox themselves and not actually active with the community or, you know, basically interactive with them. But then you have some devs that might might not be doxxed, but very active with their community and they can basically gain that relationship with their community. So I wanted to kind of get you all's perspective. Like, what is that important? Or if it's not important, like, what do you all think about that? Uh, I don't know, cause it did, like I don't know, cause some I don't know. There's a lot of projects that people are in docs. I think now it's more it's more needed and more wanted in this space because all the scamming that's going on. So everybody feels like they yeah. want they want a community to a community to be doxxed. Board Ape Yacht Club ain't doxxed. They have never been doxxed. You know what I'm saying? And they're doing wonderful. But that's back then. You know what I'm saying? I think now it's a total different story because of all the BS that's going on in this space. So. It's yeah. all dependent. I just say look at the longevity of, of the project. Like if you see a project that just pops up on Twitter and they're like, All right guys, this is a stealth man. We you know, the, the, the Twitter's been around for two, three days. Like I'm not saying don't trust them, but just kind of look and see at how people are like engaging with it and if they're engaging back and then when you get in the Discord, my big red flag is yes, if you're not if the project's not doxxed and it hasn't been around like marketing, like you can look at like hate beast been around for six months, seven months you know building up their hype and uh, invisible friends and and uh, a lot of these projects that just pop up out of nowhere because there is one like BAYC four people they they popped up three days they wanted to mint the same day that they started getting a, pun a bunch of people into the discord that's a big red flag if you don't see a set mint date and then they're like all right guys we're gonna mint tomorrow wait what you know where's the, where's the roadmap where's the website where's the smart contract those are just big red flags to me right off the bat and you know like that's where you guys could do your research is make sure you you check and see what this project is really trying to do how long have they been around i like that like if you, if you smell something kind of funny you, there, there's probably something somebody probably stepped in something along the way so yeah i i like that a lot i see a couple of hands up balaji what's up hi hello uh myself balaji i'm from uh, india uh, just a uh, lot of uh, new scams is going on is for newcomers, how to uh, identify and how to ignore them. So a lot of scam messages coming. I'm new to the NFT world. I'm getting a lot of uh, ad, ad uh, I think we can improve your followers and a lot of, lot of uh, mm, uh, scam people also messaging me and, uh, uh, and how to ignore them and uh, any guidance. Sure, turn sure. your messages off. From yes, every turn your DMs media. off. Stop, <laughs> stop responding to DMs. Yeah, like if it's a DM, it's not worth your time. It's a, it's this isn't an anonymous space. As much as we seek for doxing and all that stuff, like this is a 
I would say 90% anonymous space. Yeah, so, they're not like, going to ever write you. They're never going to DM you. They're never going to say, you're going to get this white list. Just join you're basically here. basically talking to a ghost. Yeah. That's that's 110% right. Turn <laughs> off your, especially on Discord, I'll say. Turn them off whenever you're getting that thing. Oh, oh and even on your Twitter. Twitter too. Yeah. When, yeah, on your Twitter DMs, whenever uh, the beautiful, and I'm talking to the men in here, when a beautiful woman just all of a sudden comes into your DMs and says, hey, uh, <laughs> <laughs> how you doing <laughs> how you doing that's right uh she's not just uh she doesn't just want to talk talk your nft she wants to take your seed phrase and she's, she's not a, a virus <laughs> bro 80 percent of the time it's a dude so let's just be real real quick that. Yes, <laughs> and don't click any of the links that get sent to you honestly if you guys don't even click links on google because i would tell you guys is i got scammed from google and they're putting there's a group in russia they're putting out paid ads to get people to click the link and it fishes your whole computer for your seed phrase so you know, be careful on the links that you click. If it's not an official links, the only links I ever click is like a, a maybe a Discord. If it's Discord.gg, and then whatever the thing is, and then I look to see how many people's in that Discord before I even join it, and then I still check the official links first. So it's like ten times do your due diligence. Yeah, you've even talked before that uh, you know Discords have been hacked before. And yep. it'll look like it's coming from an official source, and it will be a fake minting site that you do. It seems like every day a Discord's been hacked. Every day this whole last since New Year's, every day somebody's Discord's getting hacked. Yeah, so there's no there's no guarantee here to to you know to stop it, but you've got to do everything you can do to be smart about it. And not answering DMs is a good place to start. Uh, let's see, I saw someone with a Hype Roots collection. What's up? You had your hand up. Uh, yeah, uh, a little bit out of topic. Uh, so. We recently put this project out. Me and my wife put this project out. We're trying to um, raise a hundred thousand for uh, for an adoption for uh, a newborn. It's called domestic adoption. So we were trying to get as many people to buy our NFTs so we can go through with the process. So anyone interested, y'all can go check it out. And the link is in the bio. Great. Thanks for thanks for adding there. You know, the thing is, is, you know, he just came on here, told us about a project and we're in the midst of talking about, you know, what to look for, for good and bad projects. And while I'm sure your project is a fantastic one, a lot of people in here are going to kind of wrinkle their forehead a little bit whenever they hear something. Because are we jaded now whenever we hear like something that's like pandering to like our emotions and saying like, hey, you need to, you know, help out this and that for this or this charity or whatever. I think it probably uh, put, we're just so on defense. We, we don't know what to do at this point. I'm gonna keep it all the way, all the way real with you. I'm not doing nothing because I don't. It's just like it's like, bro. It's like when you get those letters in the mail, donate to a child in Africa <laughs> or Malaysia. The Sermon McLaughlin type. Twelve, to year, 12 to cents. Twelve cents to feed a twelve cents to feed a country. Nah, bro. No, I'm good. Like twelve cents to feed the kids in my house too. <laughs> yeah, see, look, I would have, I would have went around about that approach a whole different way. I'd have been like, "Hey guys, you know, check out my oh, Discord. This is my project." And then in there, I'll have a whole website built with a picture of the kid and saying, "Hey guys, like, you know, I'm with the kid. Like, this is this is what I'm trying to adopt. I'm putting credibility behind what I'm trying to do and giving proof and and you know things like that. Like, I'm gonna build a whole ass like you know, uh, you can't doubt what I'm saying type deal. You know. So you think if you're a charity, if you're a charity Yo, can anyone project, dare anyone? coming out the yet, gate bro. with the charity is probably. No, you're good. You're here. I hear you. Yeah, you're good. You're here. Yeah, you think if there's a charity project, do you think coming right out the gate with the charity is maybe the wrong approach? I definitely do. <laughs> yeah. That's like saying, that's like saying, hey, um, Tradeverse, um, my wife got cancer for five years, and can you please send me some money, bro? I appreciate it. I don't know you from a hole in the wall. Right, right, right. What are you right. gonna think? But instead, if you kind of come out and you say like, "Hey, I've got this project. Here's the art. The art's really cool. The uh, community's really, re really excited about this." And then later on, as as uh, you get excited about the project, then you're like, "Oh, this also helps out X, Y, Z." Because people are gonna do their due diligence on a project. They're gonna look into a project, find out what's going on with it, and then ask those questions. So to me, that's important. Uh, I've had a can that's had up for, up for some time. Uh, World of Yakov, Yaka what's up? Yeah, so I, I think what you guys are kind of going over is like with the charities. Um, I think it's good if they use it as a part of the roadmap or their buildability or transparency about who they are. But I think if they use it on a leg to stand on, like this is why you guys should be with us. This is why we're better than the next project. Like trying to use it as a marketing tactic almost. I think that's where it gets into that like 
cringe area i hate to say it about charities but like the cringe space of like you know like the sarah mclaughlin commercial you know you always want to change the channel when that that commercial comes on because you're just tired of hearing it so it's like that same tune same song that's always been playing but like i think if they use it as like a like a maybe a roadmap like hey we're going to do this stuff for the community we're going to be doing this for our discord we plan to do this growth and then once we get to this point in our roadmap we're going to use this money we're going to move, make moves into this charity and this is how it's going to work as we give back to our real communities you're saying timing is important to me that's yes yeah. that's why the sarah mclaughlin commercial i'm trying to watch friends okay i'm trying to <laughs> laugh at joey and uh instead i'm hearing sarah mclaughlin make me cry about you know baby puppies and, you know what i you know, I'm sorry. You know what I think? Those are the I think, worst. I think, I think the projects that don't mention it at all and just bring it to your attention when it's needed. Yeah, like, it's like, yeah, right, think, we're, we're donating 100000 here. It's like, whoa, oh, shoot. Okay, cool. Yeah. I right. think the topic was, though, is like, how do charities, like, projects, like, businesses that are already charities that are coming into the space how did they go about it like i think what, what we mistake is that like there's a lot of projects out there that donate to charities but now there's actual they projects actual that charities. are charities yeah. Uh, yeah well if that's the case and then they, they can give all the proof of information um you know what i mean like well this is the actual charity like shack did his and they gave back to kids but i mean it's shack everybody's gonna trust shack but one thing it wasn't just like Hey guys, this is Shaq doing this. He went on a Twitter space with thousands of people and put his cause out there and said, this is what I'm doing and this is where I'm giving back to. You know, uh, I think it's just like, then have a representative of the char of the charity, come on, you know, I'm such and such from this charity and this is what we're doing. Yeah. I think Tim was going to say something. What's up, Tim? Hey, hello everyone. Good morning, good morning, good afternoon. No, I was just agreeing with all, all of you because it makes sense. Tom and his everything. And you don't want to just see certain things just pop up out of nowhere, especially when charity comes into play. Because if that's what you're leading with, it's like kind of suspicious to me, actually. I don't know. So um, I got a question for you, Tim. So you're a professional athlete, and I'm sure you do charities and have people come to you with charities. What do you look for when these people are coming to you it's to like, be a part of their charity? Like, I want a detailed explanation of what the utility is. Like, I have people in my DMs now asking me to invest in my first NFT. And one of my main questions is, like, what's the utility? What is it going to be? Like, what do you, what's the purpose of this? Because I don't want to just put my money into anything, right? Like, I don't think anybody does. So if they give me a well-detailed explanation, I probably will be having them on my radar. It's, I, don't need, I, think it's, I think it's your money. Well, you know what it is, but it's your money and your name because your yep. name is its own brand. Yep. Exactly. And I, I'm still trying to figure out what NFT, like, the, like I'm obviously going to invest in a couple of them. But whenever I first invest in one, I plan on making it my, my profile picture, right? So I want to promote, like, a NFT, like, what is the utility behind these projects? Do y'all have any examples of some good ones? Yeah, that, the Golden um, Ticket. That... Hey, the Golden Ticket. The Golden Ticket is a project that, that we're all coming out with. And once it once it's ready, we'll definitely talk to you about it, Tim. So that way you can get a full grasp of the whole process of what we're trying to do. But definitely the Golden Ticket. But just a good example is like um, Psychedelics Anonymous. That is a, a project that they're trying to give back to mental health and, and helping people with um, psychosyllabin research and, you know, how it benefits you. And, and you know, we all go through life the same way whether what the ups and downs are is different but we all have our ups and downs and men people's mental health is super super important because i mean we all deal with it daily no matter how much money you have no matter how famous you are or broke we are it we all go through struggles and so like a project that is based on building mental health like that that's a great project man that's a perfect one to mention i feel like in this in this case uh blue chip you've had your hand up for some time what's up yeah, I just wanted to kind of chime in on what you all were talking about as far as the timing of everything. I think one important thing is to read the room. Um, there's nothing wrong with, you know, talking about your project, but I, I'm a huge advocate of uh, building relationships more than shilling. Um, and I say that because it's important that people understand who you are, get to know, you know, what's, what everything, your background and things of that nature before they get into a project. And if you're someone that's interested and someone that, you know, people feel like they can converse with, then they'll look further into your project and kind of go from there. And um, I know Tim had also mentioned other projects as well. Um, this, the, my current PFP is actually a puzzle, a, a punk that I created myself. Um, there's a, um, a project called Puzzle Punk. So like you could actually create your own punk that looks like you, or you could have fans that create punks that look like you. So 
those are um some other options as well but you know just to kind of t- chime into what you you all were talking about i think that's that's very important for people to get to know you and build those relationships man i love that oh, oh go ahead <laughs> oh, I, say, I still got puzzle punks that i ain't put together yet <laughs> <Me either>. <laughs> <laughs> oh man the builders live please please if you get a chance definitely build your own at least one at least one that's pretty funny pro trader you had your hand up just for a moment what's up Hey guys, how you doing, Christine, Tim, the rest of you guys? Thanks for having me up here. What's today. up? What's up? What's up? Fill you in on some alpha, which I see how to spot a good NFT project. So, if you guys want to grab a piece of paper and a pen, you don't got to tell me when you're ready, but let me shoot it at you. Yes. Now, in stocks, uh, there's a system that I use, which has been used for 40 years. It's called the Ken Slim system. It identifies the seven key characteristics of the best performing companies of all time. And if you find one today that has those seven characteristics, the odds on you finding an amazing company definitely increase. And I figured this formula out in crypto and now in NFTs. And NFTs and crypto are very similar. It's called the ransom formula. R-A-N-S-O-M. R stands for rank. You want to find a crypto coin that's moving up in rank. Like on all coin market cap, you can see the ranking of the coin going from 100 to 70 to 50. And if this thing's increasing in rank, beautiful. You can also find that in the NFT world on OpenSea in the rankings. If this thing's moving up from page 2 to 250 to 240 to 230, now there are no scanners out there like in stocks and things, so you have to really get into a routine where you actively <laughs> monitor the rankings and activity. So you have R is the rank, A is the adoption. You want to see that there's activity in the NFT. You want to see that there's adoption in the wa- in the wallets that happen in the crypto, and that's easily findable in the research and the charts that are available. The N stands for new. What's so new and great about this particular crypto or NFT that's going to make it exciting and propel to the future? The S is the amount of outstanding um, coins or the supply of the particular nft the smaller the supply the better because supply and demand it's easier to move a coin with a hundred million than it is for a quadrillion same thing with an nft it's easier to move a collection with big diamond hands with a thousand than it is with 10 and then uh the next one is uh, after s is o and that's the outlook what's the outlook for the nft what's the utility what's the outlook for the crypto coin and the utility and the last one is m the market. What's the general market? Are you in a freaking giraffe when all the apes are pounding and you should be in an ape NFT? Uh, is DeFi running in crypto and you're in uh, a farming uh, uh, crypto? So you got to make market momentum. And that formula, which I've put together, Ransom, if you find an NFT or a crypto that fits those characteristics, you'll have a winner. So put together a formula of success on one that works for you and carry it on to your winners in the future and it'll work for you. Awesome. Mate, that is... That's good. That's, that's good. Uh, that, I, I like them. I hope everybody did write that down. I think uh, all of those points on there could be used to make some real good decisions. Thanks, man. Appreciate that, Pro Trader, Mike. So, okay, well then, what's uh, what's what's the project that you guys are looking at right now? Let's get some. Let's get some. Uh, what's your guys' next upcoming projects for the next couple of weeks? I know Hate Beast is coming. We got uh, Invisible Friends. We got tons of new stuff like we keep missing Bro, these free you, could, you, could, you could keep all that hype shit i'm going with the nudie community yes we got thousand percent they yes. released on the 15th the nudie community is where it's at yes. join the discord i do not work for them i'm just cool with them and i love the project <laughs> and the artwork is amazing and these girls it's a women driven project and i support all women in not only my community but in the fucking world Yes, exactly. Nudie Community is awesome, guys. Make sure you guys do check out Nudie Community. That is coming out, uh, what is it, next weekend? Or no, in like four days. It's coming out. Yeah, the four days. Free sale. Yeah, that, that one's coming out in four days. Make sure you guys check out Nudie. Um, nudies are going to be dope. We also have hate. We have, oh, Crypto Bats. What, what other project you guys got? So we keep missing all these free mints, guys. Like, I kid you not. You guys, we missed the Crypto Skulls. They were 0. 0.05 this morning, and they're one e floor right now. And yeah, Tim, I'm my bad trader. And and Tim, I onboarded like six Baltimore Raven players to jump in on the new the community. So 
Hey yeah. guys, I want to mention to you, I don't know if you've seen, I don't know if you know about Vivi and the collectibles on the Vivi yeah. collection, but that shit has gone up 10x in the last mm-hmm. two weeks. My Spider-Mans, dude, I bought for $250. I'm, I'm going to hit $1,000 on one of them tonight. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. And I think that kind of trend, what I did is when the Spider-Man movie first came out, I jumped right on there and I jumped in on them Spider-Mans because I knew after the movie was over, it would be a hit and then people would want to jump in on that. So try to time those things when you're picking up an NFT. If there's, you know, a certain Marvel movie or a certain thing coming out about the celebrity, try to get in on it before he announces his big thing. And then when he does, it'll probably run up. There you go. Interesting for sure. I got my first VV uh, minted yesterday, the day before, sometime real recently, and it was some unicorn thing that I'm not really. <laughs> but uh, I, I got it. So yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens with it. But yeah, VV is an interesting ecosystem. And if you're not familiar with that, it's just something you can download on your phone. And uh, you have to buy gems again through your phone. And then you can mint. And I'm telling you guys, you want to talk about fast sold out mints pretty much the moment day. It oh my is- God. It's empty. <laughs> yeah, it's I think so they have like <clears throat> what the people do is they line up like six or seven phones at one time with all these accounts. When that thing goes live, there's bots that are just you know taking it. It's nuts, it's nuts yeah. dude. It really is. Not a lot in seconds. They saw it in seconds. But you might get lucky, so it's always worth the try. Yeah, I, I did get lucky, and, and I, I actually started setting an alarm to be like, okay, in one minute it's going to go. So every day I give it a try. I finally got through and got lucky a couple of days ago. Uh, but you're right. I know I'm going against bots. I have to yeah, be. And trade. I heard, you know, a girl in one of their spaces say she wasn't getting them. So she called the cable company and upgraded her Wi-Fi service to the max. And wow. then she got one because her service was faster. So it's that time when you press it to, I guess, when, it, you know, every split second matters in that kind of situation. So she she fixed it by getting a faster Internet connection, believe it or not. Wow. Wow. You know, we've given a stat here before that said something along the lines of if you if you whitelist and get on a whitelist for a project, you have a 75 percent chance of selling in profit. If you buy off the secondary market, you have a one in five chance of selling in profit. So it shows you how important it is as we're looking at criteria for good projects. Well, getting on a whitelist doesn't mean it's a good project. But it certainly is gives you a greater chance of getting in at a low price where if it does it's end just up like an IPO. You know, with an indication of interest, you have to broker calls you. You're a big client at the firm. He says, we're coming out with an IPO in two weeks. How many shares you want? You give me an indication of interest. And you're like locked in from that. They like allocate money from your account. So they know when that thing goes live, boom, it's sold out. And then the regular public can't get it. They buy it at a higher price. Same exact thing. Yep. That's a good way of putting it because I think it's a way that many people can relate to. And yeah, you have a greater chance whenever you get it off that white list. Doesn't mean it's a good project. Doesn't mean that IPO that you get is going to you know, do really well. Uh, but it at least says that you get in at a cheaper price or anything like that. It's um, a great way to flip, too, and make money. You know, could you, it, it, okay. Could you imagine if they said you couldn't flip, bro, because you're not a sophisticated enough investor and you don't have $25,000 in NFTs? So if you buy one, you have to hold it. You can't flip it. That's a freaking stock thing, dude. I can't believe that old men put that into play and that would never go and fly nowadays, dude. So the, the whole thing's going to change, man. Yeah. I hope you're right because you're right. It is an old way of doing things, but it's it's managed to stick around. And I, I I would assume it just go away that type of mentality of you have to own so much before you can you know flip or something like that. I'm so glad the DeFi space, the NFT space, is not like that. Yeah, no, it's definitely a great way to to flip and make profit. If people want to flip uh, NFTs and, and like continuously, because there's always a new project every day. There's a new project. If you guys want to keep liquidity and not just be stuck. This is just my process and everybody can have their own. So what I do, like we just had one that was Chubby Kaiju, Kaiji. We, I was able to mint six of those. I sold off five of them and went, I doubled my profit. So I, I minted them all at 0.04. I sold them all for 0.2, five of them for 0.2. That's one ETH uh, out of spending probably a 0.25 for the whole, all six of them. And then I kept my best one. So that gives me liquidity to get into the next project and then also hold one. If the project keeps going up, then I can sell that one for more later. Um, so that's definitely a well, way that I go at least. Yeah, that's a great – everybody listen to that. That's an amazing way that he does that. You don't go buy a pack of baseball cards and go buy one card out of the pack, dude. You go buy a pack because out of that, you're going to have one really good one, two or three that you can trade out of, and then get a better card from. It's the same collection thing. Follow what he does. It's very smart. That makes sense. That definitely makes sense. I have a side question. Uh, 
this is on topic but off topic, right? Um, back to the whole utility thing, and when it comes to charity NFTs, what percentage if if it's a good charity NFT project, right? What is a good percentage that they will be donating back to whatever the cause is? Because say like they make like two million, twenty thousand dollars is not a lot. Yeah, I was thinking more in the room at least a hundred thousand, hundred fifty, maybe one hundred. Yeah, I've seen projects do about a hundred, two hundred thousand for sure. I mean, it's not well, like it's a project close, yeah. for the community. It all should go back to the charity. If it's a project for a charity, like I'm doing Cure Token, uh, yeah. all of it goes to Cure Token. Save the Tigers, all of it should go to save, you know, the Tigers and 10% to run the business and maybe 10% for marketing, but 80% should go uh, to the cause. But that, that definitely is if it's a full charity project. But if you want the, like I say, it's a, just a normal project and they're donating to a charity, I would say for me, because you know these projects do millions. I mean, like literally just a, an average project minting out is doing four to five million dollars or two million dollars so like like you said tim i think i would say like minimum of like 50 to 100k shouldn't we be talking in percentages though just because oh yeah, yeah, yeah i was, I was about to say that yeah, yeah. so I, I would definitely recommend 10 to 40 percent depending on what the mint cost is what yeah. the volume looks like um are you guys going to give royalty percentages to the company so are you guys going to push secondary sales to them yeah um so yeah there you go that's that's better if we talk percentages yeah that way you just have enough to fund the, the team. You have uh, marketing ability, so you can make uh, marketing activations. Um, you have the ability to do events or merge or stuff like that um, to engage with your holders. Um, it just leaves a lot more room. And then you can always go back to the charity and give more. You know, I'm glad you said that because I, for a charity project, if their only way of raising money for the charity is through the transfer of, you know, for, of NFTs for, for Mint, you know, and they don't have any, you know, merch or something like that to have a continued kind of revenue stream to be able to, you know, give more to charity. I, I kind of think it's almost, it's not a pump and dump, even if the people are righteous and they're giving the money where it's supposed to go, it's got a limited lifespan, if nothing else, if they don't actually have a good plan. And for somebody like Tim here, that's looking like, well, where should I put my money behind? What's, what's good ones to put behind? To me, you want to see that they have more of a plan than just for this month or this quarter, that they have a plan going forward to be, you know, self-sustainable. Yeah. So the project I'm working on personally for myself, um, we've been in talks here in Houston um, with a women's abuse shelter that works um, getting people out of human sex trafficking. So human sex trafficking um, is the top where the Houston is the leading leader in human sex trafficking. Um, it's on average that 20 percent of men have either engaged, participated or bought into human sex trafficking, um, which is higher than most. So I think we're at least 12 percent higher than any other city um, in the world just because we're close to the border. Um, we're the outlet for um, the whole world basically for this market unfortunately um it's sad to say um but there is a house here well there's a few houses here that's through refuge for women and the project i'm working on making we want to be able to fund them for over three years um their their um yearly ask is fifty thousand dollars and we want to put one hundred and fifty thousand dollars up for them um so when we get that funding um the lifespan of the investment will be three years if you want to look at it that way so it's just something interesting to know that like even if the NFT goes to zero, their their work that they put into the community will still have life, you know? Yakov, you, you just gave a perfect blueprint on how to introduce yourself, okay? Because you came into the room, you kind of, you talked with us, you bantered with us, you gave us some opinions on some different things. You didn't come right out the gate swinging saying, you know, this is, this is the charity, this is the project I'm dealing with. You got to know us, you kind of had some rapport with us. And then towards the end, you kind of came here with a, a project here. And it sounds like a great project. Uh, I, those numbers that you gave, I had no idea. Um, I'm, I'm in Texas myself, and I had, I had no idea. So um, eye-popping or ear-popping. I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's, uh, Mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, unbelievable to hear a stat like that, that and, and that it's that hot, much higher than the, uh, the rest of the country. So uh, unbelievable. Everybody check out that project, or you can look over to Yukob's uh, uh, feed to find more information. We're still working on the art and everything, so it's it's a slower process. We also have to work with lawyers and stuff like that because we're trying to get the stories of the women um, that are in the house, um, which is kind of a touchy subject because these are women that are coming out of human sex trafficking, so they're very heavily protected by the law right now. Um, but there is a lot of few that have been recovered. They're out of the houses now. They're back to normal life. Um, so it's a very slow process right now. Um, the art is ready that we have going forward, but we are definitely hitting a lot of road bumps along the way trying to make this work um, for the safety of our holders. Um, the women, and also obviously the charity. This is interesting stuff. You know, 
all of this puts together that, you know, you kind of need somebody. We've said before, you need somebody to look over the contract for you if you don't have that ability, and I don't. So you need that uh, ability. You need somebody to tell you good projects, like Yakov just said, you know, where he could come in and tell us about a project that he's working on. And then you just kind of have to have an eye after that. You have to know how to read. Uh, is their social media botted? Do they have a good website? Do they have a good community? All this stuff. All this is important to determine, determining whether you've got a good NFT project in front of you or a dud NFT project in front of you, or even worse, a, a scam or a rug pull that's not going to put the money uh, that they say is going to go towards a charity um, actually going to their charity. If you heard me joking with Christine right when we started, that somebody tweeted out, hey, the charity is actually my bank account. See ya. Mm. And that was yeah. terrible. <laughs> that happened over the weekend, and uh, that's actually a, a very good point too. Trader is look at the look at the projects. What I do is I also look at their followers. If you see that all of a sudden they went from like a four hundred followers to like ten thousand overnight, check the following. Look and see if they're all from China. That's always a good thing, and you know you you want to see if these projects are just buying their followers because if that's the case, then you know you might be buying into a, a quick pump. Um, yeah. And one thing with actual not just to put them on blast but i did start looking at mtg mtg's hype and their their post that had twenty five thousand retweets if you look at it it was actually a whole lot of retweets from bot accounts so those are just things to actually look out for when you're checking at people's profiles and in social medias yeah. you gotta be you also gotta be careful because it could be the person that that that's speaking on this platform you know what I'm saying? You got to just be real careful, man. It's just mm -hmm. a lot of people aren't aren't good people. And a lot of people are just out to get the little bit that we do have. And you got to keep it as close to you as possible, man. And just, like, watch your surroundings. Yeah, make, make good decisions. Make good mm -hmm. decisions. You know, another thing, whenever finally the Traderverse uh, platform does come out, it'll have almost like a Reddit upvoting and downvoting sort of a thing. And uh, I'm hoping that whether it's an influencer or maybe even somebody announcing projects and that sort of thing, they can just get, you know, if it's found to be a scam, somebody can just be downloaded into oblivion or good legit projects can be kind of brought to the top. And that can probably help out too. Now, a lot of times that might just be somebody, whether they're making, you know, calls and saying, buy this token, buy this stock, that sort of thing. And that kind of thing can be upvoted or downvoted. Uh, but yeah, I'm also hoping that people use that in the way of finding good projects too, because we, we all want to stay away from them. No one of us want to get involved in a project that, uh, you know, ends up rugging or ends up, you know, ultimately doing harm to the, to the space um, for sure. Well, I am about to wrap it up here uh, with the alpha hour here with the Traderverse alpha hour. Anybody else have any last little uh, uh, nuggets they want to give to the, uh, to the group before we, we get on out of here? Please say, focus do your due diligence. Due diligence. Yeah, and I would say just just immerse yourself in the community. Don't be don't look at the community, but actually be in the community, and that will give you a lot of good vibes to feel if you know you want to move forward with it or not. See, that's that, that's maybe one of my biggest is learn the community, learn the vibes of the community, find out whether that's legit or not. Because to me, you can kind of smell it when something kind of seems off. So definitely kind of keep that in mind. Well, with that, I am the voice of DeFi. You can follow me on Twitter at voice of DeFi. You can also follow the Traderverse account. Uh, it's the one I'm speaking from right now to learn about the Traderverse social media network that is soon to be launched. And uh, we will do these, uh, these spaces uh, Monday through Wednesday for sure, as I have Christine in here with me. And then we'll also meet on Thursday and Friday in Telegram and in Discord, respectively. So with that, I am Stephen, the voice of DeFi. With me is Christine, who's feeling a little under the weather today, but she will get feeling better soon. Until next time, I'll see you tomorrow at 1730 UTC. Peace, y'all. Later.